Hey everyone, welcome to Beyond Sunday. So glad that you all could join us as we extend our weekend conversation. Once again, we are in week two of our Anchor series and uh, joining me is Clint and Diane Rutledge and I'm going to go to gallery view so that everyone can see better. There we go. Awesome. Hey guys, how you doing? Great. Yeah, we're yeah. doing good. Good. Yeah, thanks thanks for, uh, for hopping on. Clint, great job preaching this weekend. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was timely. Um, I felt like it was a message that so many of us needed to hear with everything going on. And um, the whole series is, is kind of something that, that we need in terms of focusing on hope and what is our hope and why do we have hope and just setting our minds on those things is really healthy with everything going on in our world today. So thank you for that timely message. You were in Romans, you were in James. Um, talking about trials and suffering and what, how God uses those to produce good things in us, perseverance, leading to character and maturity and completeness in Christ, right. the things that we all desire. So um, anyways, before I start asking questions, um, how was the process for you, Clint, writing the message, getting to preach it? Yeah, uh, this is one of the messages where um, I, I definitely lived it as I was preparing it. Um, we for sure had a hard last couple of weeks and I felt like I could totally relate to just this idea of trial and suffering and, and like persevering through something that we thought was going to like ease up. And it's just like the moment we thought it was going to ease up, we're right back in it and we're kind of tired and exhausted and almost like suffocating again. And so as I was preparing, I, I was for most of it, I was just challenging myself, like, do I buy into this? You know, it's so easy to teach the concepts, but then it's, it's a whole nother story when you have to apply it in your own life and in your own heart. So I did a lot of that hard week or hard work uh, mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks as I was preparing it. Yeah. Well, you guys have had like quite a 2020, um, even early, yeah. late, late 2019, um, you know, just to catch other people up. So those of you who don't know Clinton, Diane, all that well. Um, Clint has been the um, student ministries pastor in Livermore for quite some time and was a student ministries pastor in Brentwood before that. And so he's been on our team a long time. And, um, and we'd been preparing uh, both uh, Clint and Diane to be campus pastors. Um, and at some point, um, we felt like they had that gifting and calling. And so um, the Brentwood campus went through a transition of leadership as, as Billy Reader stepped aside and uh, pursued something else. And so they stepped in and it was good timing for them to step in and begin leading our Brown campus. Um, but it was also a, a tough environment for them to enter into as the transition wasn't always smooth. And it was, it was a campus in turmoil to a certain degree. And so they had to jump into um, a leadership situation that was, was very challenging right away late in 2019. And, and just as you guys are starting to get your like feet under you in terms of establishing leadership within the campus, um, COVID-19 hits and yeah. we stopped meeting on Sundays. So it's been more than just, I mean, yeah, I'm, the last couple of weeks, I'm sure were difficult, but yeah. you guys have had quite uh, a run. And I think, yeah, we've had quite a run so far. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's why for me, this message was so timely. Um, because I truly did have hope that come July, we were going to be out of this. And I was, I just, I keep like renewing my hope based on the months. Like I'm like, okay, come May, it's going to be good. And then I'm disappointed and then it's extended. And then, okay, come June, come July. And eight months, but we've been apart from our people for four months. And when I realized that it's like my heart just took another hit and I was like, Jesus, this is so discouraging. So I really needed this message this weekend on hope. And what's been cool is as I've been looking at themes throughout churches across America, I follow a bunch of different churches. A lot of pastors are preaching on hope right now. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I think it's yeah. a movement of the Holy Spirit because God knew that this was going to be difficult for us. And so we all are in need of hope right now. You know, I noticed the same thing. I, I noticed when we were going through our racial reconciliation series, I noticed how many churches around the country were preaching a very similar series to right. us. And the, the high percentage of churches preaching on that like was astounding to me how we there was so much unity in that yeah and, and then I noticed the same thing this last weekend and a, a few different churches that I know pay, was paying attention to mm -hmm. had similar things and there's not like this group call that we're all on right. recording it's it really is like the spirit moving in a way of 
people yeah. reading the room in the same way of, okay, what's needed right now? What do we need to talk about? And what right. is the spirit leading us into? So yeah, that is really cool. Let me jump into, um, I'm going to flip the, the order of what the questions and just what, well, since you brought that up, just kind of like your hope being set on like, what could be the end of COVID really soon. And then it's not. And like, we're on this roller coaster ride. Um, I know Brentwood already announced that schools are going to do distance learning in the fall. And I think pretty much every, every district is going to announce the same thing if they already haven't. Um, and so as like, I, we have kids in school and a lot of people listening do, or they have friends or family who have kids in school. And so this is a big deal. So like, as you think about, wait, this is going to be a long season. Like this isn't going away anytime soon as we get through the fall with the kids at home and we're homeschooling them. Mm -hmm. What are you guys doing? Or maybe you haven't done them yet, but you're starting to like think about, okay, what do we need to do? What do we need to change so that we don't like just operate on empty constantly and, yeah. and are less useful for ministry because of how challenging these situations are. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a tough one. You want to tackle that? <laughs> Well, I think we're in, we're starting to have those conversations. I don't think we have it figured out yet, but the conversations between us sound a lot more like, okay, now that we know this is, this is going to be a while, um, what, what is our routines going to look like our new routines? And I think that's a lot of it. Um, like I was saying in the message on, we kind of just got thrust out there like, okay, this is going to be quick. And, and when it's quick, it's, we feel like we can kind of just like deal with it as it comes. But now that it's going to be this marathon, we have to prep for it and train for it. And that requires a lot more planning. And in, in my opinion, like spiritual, like we would say the word disciplines or like routines or, or just like we have to get in this habit where, um, where we're being refilled and re-encouraged and re-inspired and redrawn closer to God. And like church in a building on Sunday morning did that for us. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't a coincidence that we would get, we, there was a rhythm in our life and all of a sudden that's gone mm -hmm. and online is great, but it's not, it's not filling us as much or it's not meeting those same needs of the physical. And so we can't, we can no longer just say in the question, like, how do we get that now? in this new way of life. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of our conversations are like, okay, we need to be refilled and re-encouraged. We were doing that on a weekly basis. What does that look like yeah. now in this shelter in place in this COVID season? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one thing I would add to that, absolutely, that was great, um, is grace for ourselves. And I know that that really has nothing to do with hope, but I think that in this season, as parents are getting back to work and getting back to now distance learning with their children, um, having grace for yourself to know that there's going to be good days and bad days and not having super high expectations and pressure. I think next season. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so that's what I'm doing in my heart, just knowing that I'm going to fail some days at this, but you know what, like God's got my back and he's not disappointed with me. And um, yeah. Yeah. I noticed um, for a while there, I, I mean, I, I knew I was running on empty when everything annoyed me and everyone was doing everything wrong. Yeah. Like, like the kids couldn't do anything right. Like no matter what, it was going to end bad and they were going to do it wrong and I was going to be frustrated. And like, it was just like this, I felt like for a few weeks we were in this cycle of at least me being in that place and that affects everyone else. And one of the changes that Sean and I have made is just realizing that like our marriage was on autopilot to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the things that normally fill us and routines we had were taken away and we didn't replace them with anything. Mm -hmm. And so we were on autopilot, not investing in our marriage and dealing with some of the, some of the more difficult circumstances. Right. And it wasn't going well. And mm -hmm. so like we've had to shift things to, to change our like rhythm of the day to make sure yeah, we can't go to church, but her and I can do things and we can't go on dates like we used to because childcare is not as available and right. things aren't open. And so we've had to figure out other ways to figure out like, cause it, I don't, I think this is true for most families. Like as the marriage goes, it sets the tone for the rest of the household and how you're able to deal with everything else that God has coming your way. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's been something that we've like made an adjustment on that I feel like is starting to pay off for us. And yeah. as we look at this being a long season, right. 
and I'm hopeful like that can continue to position us to to do a little bit better and not always be running on empty. So, I love that. Yeah. I think that's so wise. And we kind of started that as well, realizing that, um, yeah, like you said, we weren't replacing any of the things that we enjoyed doing with anything new. We weren't getting creative. And so once we started getting creative with at-home date nights, but even for our kids too, right? Like our kids need to break up their routine and yeah. have some sort of differentiation and spontaneity and excitement, even if it's just something little and they really feed off our energy. So if we're like, this is lame, they're gonna be like, it's lame, why are we doing it? But it's like, this is the most exciting thing. We're going for a walk around the block. Yeah. Um, they're gonna get excited too. And so, yeah, just adding those things into our schedule through the season, I think will be super helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I would just add real quick, James one, the first word he uses is consider, mm. right? And so like, it just means to look at or focus on. And really that's, I think, the biggest part of this for me personally is like, when I was looking at this as a sprint, and then all of a sudden I still have to go, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. But when I can look at this as like, okay, it, I mean, it's a mindset, right? When I can look at this as like, I'm running a long time here, all of a sudden those miles get a little easier. And it, the only thing that changed is my mindset. It's mm -hmm. what I focused on. That's good. And so that's, you know. Sure. No, that's great. Good point there. So you're in Romans 5 and James 1, which are phenomenal chapters of the Bible. R Romans 5 is one of my favorites. Um, and you only got to like dabble in them a little bit as it related to the, the topic we had. Um, of trials and suffering and what that does. But like, Clint, do you have anything else you want to share as you studied those chapters? Um, because there's more in there that kind of relates to the topic that we didn't have time to get into this weekend. Yeah, I mean, I'm a preacher. I could, how much time do we have to go over this? <laughs> a minute. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Romans 5, you guys. Oh man, read the whole thing. It's so good. And Paul talks about these concepts over and over and over like that word we kept talking about perseverance or endurance upamone paul uses it like 30 times in his letters or something crazy like that like it's just the same themes are repeated over and over anyways but um yeah we worked through verse uh five chapter five verses uh really three to five mm -hmm. and even at the end of five when i talked about like how character um produces hope and we ended with hope and and how hope doesn't disappoint or put us to shame, depending on the, the Bible translation you're using. Um, I didn't even get to end that set, that one verse, which, which Paul says, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. In other words, Paul is saying like, like you can put, like you can bank on this. Like this hope is not going to just disappear. Like when your circumstances change, like, He's saying that that because that word because means like this is the proof that of God's gonna fill our empty cups. And it's like because God's already poured out his spirit into our hearts, uh, or, or it poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. In other words, like um like uh, God has already done this for us through the Holy Spirit, right? Like even, even though Jesus was resurrected and ascended to heaven, God is still here through his spirit. Mm -hmm. And then Paul goes on in Ephesians and Corinthians to talk about how the Holy Spirit is actually like a deposit guaranteeing that Jesus will return. And at the end of the day, that's what our ultimately our hope is built on. It's the return of Christ, right? Faith is in Christ the person Hope is in Jesus coming back, which is more of an event. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately we're, we're longing for that day. There's always going to be a feeling of emptiness in our hearts as we consider that because it hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what Paul's getting at is like, while you're feeling that little bit of emptiness, know that Jesus is going to do what he said. He's going to fulfill every promise. And we know this because we have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've always looked at hope as, as you were preaching this weekend, one illustration that came to mind was, I look at hope step and you're in the water, but someone hands you like, you know, a life vest or a ring and you're like, okay, like I've got this, but the waves are still crashing on you. And like, you're hoping that someone's going to rescue you, but actually like you have a raft, you have a GPS unit that's attached to you and someone's actually on their way. Like there is no way you're going down. And that is biblical hope. It's not just like this flimsy little like life saving device. It's like a full on, secure device where it's like these waves are coming but jesus is coming too mm -hmm. so you have absolute certainty and security in that mm -hmm. 
So as I think about people who are really struggling right now with the circumstances we have, the, the people that, I'm, that come to my mind who are struggling the most with the idea of hope um, aren't necessarily people who are like, had placed their hope in material things or they hoped for a perfect life and they didn't get it. What I see often is people who their hope was placed in relationships that have failed or have struggled or have tension in a way where um, it it's like they're just so hurt and let down. Like I see that more often than any other like, okay, where are you placing your hope? And then what has happened? And now what has that done to you in mm-hmm. terms of your ability to have hope? Yeah. And, um, and there's, there's, I think, you know, God wired us to be relational and part of our identity and everything is wrapped up in like our network of relationships and how those are going. And I think with COVID and the disconnection we have or the isolation with people where we maybe have a difficult relationship, I think it's placed people in a spot where they have to, many of us have to evaluate, okay, where is my hope placed? Mm. Because putting it like full stock in my relationships, um, isn't always a stable thing, even those of us who have great, great relationships, right? Because we're, we're surrounded by sinners, including ourselves. So I don't know, like that wasn't one of my questions, but that thought just popped into my head as you guys were talking about, like, ultimately the, the, where we place our hope is in the return of Christ and the deposit has already been given the guarantee that it's happening. And um, so, I mean, I think that's just a helpful thought. To, for even me to think about, okay, where am I placing my hope? Not that we don't have any hope for this world, mm-hmm. um, because there is so much good and beauty that God has created and relationships are so valuable. Like God places a high priority on our relationships. And so mm-hmm. like, what is that balance between placing all of our hope on this event that is guaranteed to come, but is not yet here versus the things going on in our life right now? Mm-hmm. Like, how would you answer that? Well, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, you said a lot of it just so well that um the first thing we learned as a couple in premarital counseling uh that we still like counsel couples with i think marriage is such an easy way to answer this question is that if i put all my hope in my marriage like i'm gonna be disappointed if i put all my hope in diane and like how she's gonna come through for me every time i need love every time i need grace every time i need intimacy you name it like this probably isn't going to work out. Mm -hmm. You know, I need something as great as she is. I need something that's secure. Mm -hmm. I need something that, that won't put us to shame. Like Paul says, that won't disappoint that will come through on their promise every time. Like like Jesus is, is our, like God is our father. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, but he's not the the father that said he would come through and then didn't come through. Right. Right. So like even the way that he, defines himself as relational right he's the perfect father he's not the imperfect father Mm -hmm. yeah it reminds me of um this was years ago now i was pregnant with my second son and i went to visit my father and i love my father but we have a strained relationship he left when i was four and um it's just been this inner desire within me for him just to love me right and so even as an older woman i'm still craving that love for my dad and um we went to visit him and he didn't it was christmas time he didn't get me a gift or my kids a gift and i was like so disappointed in him and i just kept thinking this is going to be the moment where he proves his love and i had all of this hope in my heart and then he disappointed me and i remember going to um the room where we were staying at after he had left and i just started bawling i just started crying because it was so painful that that let down that I had, that, that hope that disappointed me because of the person that I wanted to love me wasn't able to. Mm-hmm. And um, as I sat there crying, the Holy Spirit just whispered and he said, I love you. And I was like, I know you love me. And then um, he just embellished more and he was like, I am your father. Like I can satisfy that deepest part of your soul that is missing, that, that craving that you have that you're so badly seeking from him. I have it and I want to give it to you. And it was just this moment. And I remember lifting my head, like laugh crying and being like, you're my dad. Like you're my dad. Like you can do this. And it was such a cool time between me and Jesus. Um, because it was like, he is everything I need. And like no amount of human disappointment in relationships, like can, can never rob me of what I have in Jesus and what we have in God through the father. 
And so, yeah, just to add to that, I think that's such a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, what the, James talks about, but then both James and Paul talk about character, like is a word that they both use in James one and Romans five. And then James also uses maturity. They both use perseverance. Like talk to me more about what those words mean and like what, what the real takeaway is for like what's being produced in us. That's really good when times are really hard. Yeah. Those are the treasures. <laughs> That was the most difficult part of this sermon to preach because we don't, those are the treasures in scripture, especially the New Testament, but those aren't things that we treasure anymore. I think that we live in a day and age, and maybe this has always been this way. I'm not sure. I've only lived in this day and age. Um, but we live in this day and age where like we value comfort mm -hmm. and things that come easy and not really character and things that come hard. Um, so like we can, we can know this like intellectually that, oh yeah, like, everything's developed through character but then we want it through comfort mm -hmm. um and so that was there's tension there even as i prepared that in my own heart but the way that i defined uh uh character was just becoming like christ and so i think that was a way for me to say maybe you don't want better character but don't you want to become like jesus because everyone loves jesus mm -hmm. and that's also true like the new testament totally teaches that mm -hmm. um that our character is like we're on this process called sanctification we're becoming more and more and more like the son jesus and uh we'll never attain that but we'll we'll be on this process to it until we meet jesus face to face mm -hmm. and so i think that's this treasure that is is developed in us through suffering more and at a greater pace than anything else mm -hmm. and that's why james and paul in the early church it's like they weren't like morbid, like I was saying in the sermon, they weren't like looking for pain, but they were going, okay, this is going to suck. And this mm -hmm. season is very difficult, mm -hmm. but it's producing in me this, this genuineness, this Christ likeness, and also this closeness and intimacy with God, the father that I've never experienced anywhere else. And I bet you, if you ask anyone who's, who's gone through a season of intense suffering, they have perspective and they, they actually might crave a little bit of the intimacy that they shared with God in those, in those dark valleys. Mm -hmm and go, man, I was closer to God than I ever was when I was hardest. Right. I know that's true for me. Yeah. And that section for me, what stood out was when you said that as you're, God's developing your character, he's going to allow you to quit, right? Like mm -hmm. as, or as you're closing it, you have an opportunity to develop character. Yeah. He's going to, um, he's going to let you quit if you want to. And I think that that's what I was most challenged by in this season mm -hmm. is, um, just this desire to run, this desire to like quit it all and escape and not face the pain and the struggle and the unknowns in this season. Um, and so that just really spoke to my heart because I'm like, no, there is a treasure that is going to be developed in this season if I persevere, mm -hmm. that um, I am becoming more like Christ. Christ had an opportunity to surrender the cup, right? He, he, he didn't have I think that's something that we need to constantly remind ourselves of. He wasn't forced by God to embrace the cross. He chose that because yep. he had us in mind. And so as we become more like Christ, we need to choose this um, cup that we've been handed and say, okay, Jesus, with your strength, I can do this. Um, but it's hard. I mean, yeah. And I, and I would say too, like, we all have a different way that this plays out. You know, like this isn't, this isn't a uniform application. Like, we can't just say, okay, for everyone, this is your next step to, you know, persevere because there might be someone listening to this that's gone through intense pain yeah. and you're in the middle of it now and your next step, your, your perseverance is literally just getting out of bed mm. and like calling a friend or calling a counselor. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be this intense heroic, like, okay, I'm going to go serve the poor now because that's how I'm going to get myself out of this. Like, mm -hmm it just depends on, on where you're at, mm -hmm. you know, this isn't, yeah. So I, I wanted to make sure that, that was clear too. Yeah. No, I'm glad you clarified that. And I, I mean, I, I resonate with the, the concept of getting stuck or quitting as an option when you're going through trials or suffering, mm -hmm. like it's not a guarantee. I mean, if we endure, if we persevere, mm -hmm. then those treasures are waiting, but there's no guarantee in the scripture that right. says we're going to persevere or endure every single time. And so we do have a choice 
mm-hmm. that we have to make. And, and I often see either myself or others um, get stuck along the way and want to quit because when you're going through this, like a, a deep level of trial or suffering, your weaknesses and your like the parts of you that you're ashamed of, like those, those tend to come out into the light more right. where you, you, um, you tend to see how inadequate you are, all mm-hmm. these things that you, we want to tend to hide, mm-hmm. um, come out. And so it, it does create this temptation to run away from the, the pain or the trial and not lean into it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I've seen people err in a couple of ways. They let that pain and that suffering and what it, what they see in themselves, that what gets exposed to find them. And it almost, Mm. they kind of just like sit in the, this is my identity. Now I'm just the type of person where life doesn't work out. I'm the type Mm. of person that lets people down. I'm the type of person where, right. And they just sit in that place and let it become their identity. Um, as it, and really that's a runaway. That's like them not dealing with what, what the Lord has in front of them. But then I also see on the other side of that people, and I actually see this one more often is in our pride, right? Even we try to like still stay above the pain and suffering of a trial, um, by not letting anything get revealed. And like, hopefully we can skip across the top and come out the other side without any real work being done inside of us. Mm -hmm. And Oftentimes, if you're wealthy or if you have just more in life that allows you to kind of skip across the top of a trial, and that's why, like, I think James refers to rich and poor in there because um, there's a reality of what suffering does. To, mm-hmm. We were talking about this kind of like leveling the playing field, but mm-hmm. I think in our pride, we want to try to avoid those tough things being revealed that are in us that we don't want to have to come face to face with and be vulnerable with. and. Mm-hmm. And that's a runaway also. And that, I mean, like when we do that, we don't, we're not persevering in a way that James and Paul are talking about to, to enter into that character and maturity and completeness in Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And I would say the biggest sign when I know I'm doing this is when I try to turn my pain into other people's problems. And so I, I, I do a lot of blaming. I do a lot of like, gossiping is like and that's when i know like oh oh crud like i'm i'm getting to that point where i'm not persevering i'm not enduring mm-hmm. and even james uses the illustration i forget which chapter maybe two where like the mirror you know it's like a man looking in a mirror and he's like this is what this is all about this is about us it's about our character development mm-hmm. it's not about your spouse it's not about your brother it's not about mm-hmm. that friend like mm-hmm. and that's so key as we're walking right. through these things i mean even with the israelites that's what god was focusing on right nothing that we have on earth is going to come with us except for our character <laughs> and so i mean he was like you cannot enter the promised land because your guys's character is so broken right now like you guys worship idols you're constantly um questioning who i am as your provider and he's like i need to develop these things so that you can last and so that's how god is with us he's developing our character because this is something that's a treasure that we're taking with us into eternity so this is important and vital um yeah so so, like um that's not new age like that's something that's important to god he wants us to look at ourselves and be like, okay, where am I broken? Why do I have pride? Why do I have pain, insecurity, doubt in these areas? And he wants to do the hard work with you to develop those things, to heal those wounds. Um, Yeah, so that we can reflect the image of Christ. Yep, Yep. amen. I love it. Um, Those are wise words. And I think that's a good place for us to to pause the conversation. Um, There's been a lot to process, even in just in this conversation, but in the whole weekend. And, And our hope is that, this is um, helpful and an encouragement to all of you, especially as we view this COVID-19 um, season as a marathon and start to reposition our mindset um, and, and that you are able to anchor yourself in hope. And that's what we're trying to do and remind you of in this series. And we're going to continue the conversation next week. And um, so make sure you join us there. If you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, the Cornerstone Fellowship YouTube channel, make sure you do that. And um, so that you get the notifications and stuff with uh, with every new episode we have or every new sermon. But we love you all, and we're praying for you um, at all five of our campuses. Clint and Diana are especially praying for those Brentwood Brentwood, Brentwood people. Yeah, love you, Brentwood. Brent, I almost said Brentwooders. <laughs> Brentwoodians, I believe. Brent this whole community, Brentwood, <laughs> Oakley, Knights, and Discovery Bay. We love you guys. Anyways, we love you all, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye,